I will never forget the excitement I felt opening up Persona 5 for the first time. Believe it or not, there was a point in time where it felt like this game was never going to come out. I got into Persona back when P4 was the hot craze, and I remember obsessing over the release of this game. I read every article I could, scouring for a release date, but made extra sure to avoid those PV trailers so I can go in as spoiler free as possible. After years of delays and avoiding any Japanese leaks like the plague, the game was finally in my hands and yeah, it felt pretty cathartic. I still remember a friend and I cutting class to play this on launch day. That's right, as my academics rose in-game, my real life grades suffered a little bit. Not the best idea in hindsight, but hey, we all do dumb stuff when we're young. Finishing Persona 5 for the first time left me feeling a lot of satisfaction. While I thought Persona 4 was still the better game all things considered, P5 is a great game when all is said and done. But this isn't what I wanted to focus on today. I've talked about this game for literal hours over the course of this channel's life. I've basically said all that needs to be said about the game at this point, so going into any more detail would be a little excessive. So for today, we're gonna shake things up a little bit and focus on a different topic entirely. Instead of doing another critique of Persona 5 The Game, I want to instead talk about Persona 5 The Legacy, and how over the years, I feel as though my relationship with this game has shifted, and not in the way that Atlas probably wanted it to. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those videos. So strap in folks, because today we're going to be reflecting on Persona 5's spin-off era and discussing why it's time to move on. You know what I like? Turn-based RPGs. And if you watch this channel, I bet you're a fan of them too, which is why I'm delighted to tell you about today's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail. From the creators of Genshin Impact comes this high-quality free-to-play RPG with amazing production values. However, it's in its gameplay where Honkai Star Rail truly shines, offering an easy-to-learn turn-based battle system with plenty of room for creative strategies and on-the-fly experimentation. The possibilities are near limitless thanks to the amount of characters on offer, and new ones are constantly being added. The game's newest update, version 1.4, brought with it new limited 5-star characters, those being Jing Liu and Topaz and Numbi. Both of these units are specialized in specific attributes. Jing Liu is a sword wielder that deals powerful ice and destruction DPS, while Topaz is a fire character that can deal massive single target damage. Both of these legendary characters are available right now in the game's latest update, along with a slew of brand new content to experience. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to check out Honkai Star Rail by using my link in the description and pinned comment. And between you and me, you can use this code right here to get 50 stellar jades, but don't tell anyone I told you this. Once again, I'd like to thank Honkai Star Rail for for sponsoring today's video. A lot has happened since Persona 5's original release in 2016. Not only did we receive an enhanced re-release version of the original game, but we've also gotten a never-ending slew of spin-off games. Persona 5 Royal is a pretty good version of the game. While there's some stuff that I prefer in the original version, on the whole, I find this new version to be the superior way to play P5. It's the spin-off games where I start to take issues. Sure, titles like Persona 5 Dancing or Persona Q2 might look pretty harmless on paper, but it's upon further inspection when you might notice that things aren't the way they should be. On top of, let's be real here, not the greatest quality games, the way the characters are interpreted feel very disingenuous. In a game like Persona 5 Dancing, characters clearly don't have the same amount of depth as they once did. Characters are boiled down to some of their most basic traits. Ryuji is a meathead, Yusuke is socially unaware, Futaba is a gamer, Makoto hates fun, and so on. While these traits do exist in the original game, they were only a slice of what the characters were like. Sure, Ryuji can be a bit dense in the original Persona 5, but it's outweighed by the times he's proved himself to be a loyal companion. He's also going through a personal grief of his own. Ryuji feels guilty for his track and field team getting disbanded. Not only does he want to earn the forgiveness of his teammates, but he wants to learn to forgive himself. Ryuji standing up to Kamoshida wasn't a mistake. Going through an abuse like that of his own helps him empathize with those around him, and serves as his primary motivation to use his new power as a phantom thief responsibly. Now does any of that show up in these games? Well, not really. Sure, some of the stuff from the main game is referenced in something like Persona Q2, but it's done so in very brief and shallow ways. It's as if Atlas wants to rush past all the messy stuff so we can focus on the funny hahas. And I know what some people are gonna say. Persona 5 Dancing and Persona Q2 are just goofy spin-off games. They're not meant to be full sequels to Persona 5, so why not just take them for what they are? I agree with this to an extent. There's always room for more light-hearted journeys for sure, but I've never been a fan of fan service just for the sake of it. To me, 
story should have a purpose beyond just being mindless schlock for me to consume. I'd rather them use this as an opportunity to expand the Phantom Thieves as characters. Maybe use it as an excuse to explore sides of the characters we haven't seen before, or further flesh out the group's dynamic. The only spinoff that I can think of to do this is Persona 5 Strikers. That game is my favorite spinoff in the entire franchise. Not just because it's a fun and unique game for this series, but because it goes the extra mile when it comes to the characters. A lot of care and attention went into how the different Phantom Thieves were represented. Some of the lesser characters from the original game were also given a chance to shine. Haru is the biggest example of this. She was the Phantom Thief that was notoriously neglected in the original Persona 5. So to make up for that, she has a section of the story dedicated to her. The same is true for a lot of the characters. Persona 5 Strikers is a solid follow-up to the original game, and calling it a spin-off is doing it a bit of a disservice. But in a way, that's what makes Persona 5 Strikers a little frustrating to me. It proves that Atlas are willing to let these characters evolve beyond what the original game entailed, but they just choose not to. With the way things are now, Strikers exist as the exception rather than the standard, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. The reason why I find this to be an issue is because whether you realize it or not, these spin-offs and cross-promotions leave a sizable impact on the brand's legacy. And if you think I'm crazy, just take a look back at Persona 4. Before Persona 5 came out, P4 was the franchise's punching bag, and most of that had to do with just how suffocating it all was. It felt as though no matter where you looked, you were flooded with more Persona 4 content. Two fighting games, two animes, a manga run, and a rhythm game. Persona 4 had it all, and while people can look back at the game fondly in retrospect, during this spin-off era, people were absolutely sick and tired of it. The Persona 4 spin-offs suffer from a lot of the same issues that the Persona 5 ones do, but despite having a few gems in there, the overwhelming majority of these tie-ins were pretty mediocre. This, combined with the oversaturation of Persona 4 content, made the game's perception start to shift in the general public. Persona 4 became claustrophobic, and while everyone else was interested in moving on, Atlas felt the need to continue to release new products, even if it came at the expense of the game's legacy. It wasn't until people were allowed to forget about Persona 4 for a bit, when we start to look back on the game much more fondly. That is, until Twitter found it. The point that I'm trying to make with all this is that the same thing that happened to Persona 4 is currently happening to Persona 5. We've been sort of just running through the motions with this game. We got the main RPG, then the spin-offs, the animes, and the cross-promotions. It's the same stuff as Persona 4, but people aren't nearly as receptive towards it. This is because, even if the Persona 4 spin-offs were a bit silly in concept, they at the very least put in the effort to expand the universe and further the characters. Persona 4 Dancing All Night is a game about critiquing the idol industry. We see just how toxic it is towards these young, impressionable women, and how they start to associate their own self-worth to how successful they are as entertainers. It also shows us how the art of dance can be used to express our inner selves, further leaning into Persona 4's core theme of identity and change. Sure, it's a bit silly, and the execution wasn't perfect, but this game has a whole lot of heart behind it. Persona 5 dancing, on the other hand, feels sort of shoehorned. There's a lot of ambivalence behind this one, and feels like something that was made to check off a list rather than being a project that the team was legitimately interested in making. And that's not even talking about the quality of this game as a whole, which was just a major step down for Persona 4 dancing in nearly every way. There were less tracks, the remixes were lower quality, the DLC was exploitive and money gouging, and the story mode was completely non-existent. I get that using Persona 5 dancing as an example is low-hanging fruit, but it's not like I have much else nice to say about Persona Q2 either. While I find it to be a little better than the first game as a whole, it suffers from a lot of the same issues. In fact, I'd say that there's stuff that's arguably worse here than in the original game. Mainly the character writing and how the story is trying to be told. One note personality traits are continued to be pushed, and there's pages upon pages of unfunny, boring dialogue. Ultimately, what this results in is a fairly bland game that I have little to no interest in revisiting. Lately, I feel as though Atlas has become too comfortable with the current state of Persona 5, and are too afraid to make any changes to the status quo. It's a little hard for me to get excited for something like Persona 5 Tactica when I already have an idea as to how things are going to go down. It's going to be another one of those semi-canon games with an ultimately meaningless story that continues to push these flanderized versions of the Phantom Thieves. Ryuji will still be the butt of the joke, Morgana will thirst over on and complain that everyone still thinks he's a cat, and the new character will probably be linked to the main villain again. I'm sure when Tactica comes out I'll enjoy it fine enough, but currently, I'm just sort of over it.
This has been the longest gap between mainline Persona games, and in this nearly decade-long wait, what has actually happened? A couple of middling spin-offs, and some cross-promotions. Sure, there are a few diamonds in the rough here, but when the overwhelming majority of content is either mediocre or bad, I can't quite say it was really worth it in the end. It's ironic that for as hard as Atlas has been pushing Persona 5 to the general public, I find myself currently uninterested as a consumer, and that's probably the best way I can surmise my feelings towards this whole scenario. It's been nearly 7 years since the original Persona 5 was released, and a lot has changed in my life since then. When the game came out, I was about the same age as these characters. I was in the middle of my final year of high school, and Persona 5 was the best way to cap off that experience. I played a game about kids in their adolescence at a time in my life where it was time for me to grow up. I finished the game a day before my 18th birthday, and a month after that, I was graduated. A lot has changed in my life since 2017. I have a job, I've gotta pay taxes. I'm in my mid-20s now and I'm looking to move out with some roommates at some point. The future is filled with a lot of uncertainty, and it's kinda scary to think about. But when I look back and see what's changed for the Phantom Thieves over the years, honestly, it's not a whole lot, and it's disheartening for me to see. But I can see how this could be comforting for some people. You know, always have that anchor in your life to revisit the good old days, see some familiar faces, and be reminded of the days of our youths. But to me, it's the opposite. If I wanted to relive those memories, then I already have a way to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to see these characters that I love get stuck in the same, safe, boring routine. I want to be there to watch them grow, but it's clear that Atlas and I don't see eye to eye in that regard. Part of growing up is learning when it's time to let go of something you care about. Of course, I'll always be interested to see where the Phantom Thieves go next, but I'm not as invested as I used to be. Right now, I'm more interested in seeing Atlas move on to bigger and better things. I think I speak for a lot of people when I say we need a break from it all. I think it's time to let the Phantom Thieves rest for a little bit. It's time to move on from Persona 5. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to give a special shout out to all of my channel supporters for helping fund my descent into the Persona rabbit hole. If you would like to join the ranks of these awesome people, then you can either join my Patreon or become a channel member. You'll get your name in the credits like so, and also early access to videos, would you look at that? But in all seriousness, thank you so much to all these people for the constant support. It means the world to me that there are people out there that enjoy my work to such an extent to support me financially, and I'll continue to try my hardest to earn that support. If you can't tell, this video is pretty different from my usual style. I've been a little afraid of making something like this since I don't like to get too personal here on the channel, but I feel as though this specific topic is relevant enough to push me past those worries. I've honestly felt like this for a while now, and even if some of the video was a little messy, I hope that at least someone out there gets what I'm trying to say. Again, it's not like I hate Persona 5 now or anything, I'm just so fucking tired of seeing it. Sure, Tatsuka looks fun enough and I'm most likely gonna play it when it comes out. It's just that, right now, I have my eyes set on different sites. That metaphor game looks pretty sweet, I don't know. In terms of future projects, the next big video is most likely going to be on Final Fantasy X. At the time of recording this, I'm in the middle of writing the script for that video, so while I can't say when it'll be out, I can at the very least say progress is being made. If you want us to stay up to date with that and other upcoming videos, feel free to follow my Twitter or join my Discord server. Both will be linked in the description. Once again, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.